Hi everyone! So today's video is going to be an update on all my current writing projects. So I realized that I haven't talked to you about what I'm currently writing except in random vlogs and in bits and pieces in my videos, so I thought this could act as a baseline if you're new to the channel or are curious what I've been working on in a lot of my videos. Now I have a lot to talk about, so let's dive right in. Now the first project that I've been working on is a novel called Feeding Habits. So as a quick recap, the genre of Feeding Habits is adult literary fiction, so the book is narrated in third person present tense between two points of view between the two main characters. One's named Harrison, one's named Lonan. If you are part of the channel for a while, you would already know these characters. So the status of the project is that I'm currently drafting it, though I'm very close to completing it. I'm at about 80% or a little bit higher done the book, which is really exciting, which I'll get to. The book is set in the US in a couple of different places, but mostly takes place in Las Vegas and in Manhattan. So I can't really determine the current word count of the book because I'm in the middle of a revision, but it's between 50 and 60,000 words. It also has about 10 chapters and probably won't have many more than that. So Feeding Habits is book two of a duology called Mothwork. So the first book of the series was called Mothwork, the second one is Feeding Habits, and the Mothwork duology is a part of a larger series that I've been working on for a number of years called Fostered. This is a personal project, it's never going to be published. I've shared a lot of it on this YouTube channel and on my blog. If you want to hear me read some of the book, I do have like audiobook chapters recorded, but this is the logline if you don't know what Feeding Habits is about. Lonan, stuck in a toxic relationship, and Harrison, disappointed by his New York City restart, find themselves on separate trajectories toward inevitable isolation until Lonan finds purpose in helping out an old friend, and Harrison realizes his dull reboot could be revitalized if he seeks out what or who is missing. So a bit of backstory, I started this book in April of 2020, and I'm still writing it. It is almost June of 2022. It has been a struggle since day one, literally from conception of the project to the second chapter and beyond. It has just been a struggle bus of a book, the hardest book I've ever written. It's just been kind of a painful experience. I've talked about this book so many times on my channel. Recently, I posted a video where you can kind of hear my updated ramblings. I was kind of feeling a little bit emo about this book. I will link it in the description. So I won't repeat the thoughts. You can just watch that video because there were a lot of thoughts I was having. But in the last two weeks, I've been on a mission to finish it because it has been too long. And I just want to put out a disclaimer that drafting a book for two years is, is not a long time. If you take longer to draft your books, this is not to say that I think two years is way too long and that anybody who is drafting a book for two years or longer is just too slow. That's not at all what I'm trying to say. It's just this particular book has just been slow going. It hasn't really come together. You know, it's, it's not super long. Yesterday was a fantastic day for Feeding Habits. I wrote 4,400 words. <laughs> It's of this book yesterday alone. And in the last couple of days, I've written about 6,000 words of it. So it's taken me maybe about three days to write that amount of words, which is really impressive for me. You know, I don't really have huge word count days anymore. Now in the video that I linked in the description where I was talking about feeding habits and kind of sad about it, you know, I really took a stance of being a bit jaded toward the project and I needed to make that video. I really needed to sort of rant about the project because it was giving me such a hard time. Now I started it while I was finishing up my first year of university. I was literally doing like my final exams. Now I'm entering my final year of my undergrad. And so I've changed so much as a person as I've written this. I've developed a lot as a writer. And so to kind of still have like this piece of old me still clinging was kind of difficult to wrestle with. I am happy to report that since I made that video, like really going through the project, getting kind of mad at it, a little bit frustrated, I have felt so much better about it. And yesterday while I was writing, I just realized I love this book so much. It's just something for me, really. This whole series, like the Mothwork duology, was really a project to make me happy, to feel like a bit of an escape. I started Mothwork, which is the first book, when I was in my last year of high school. These books have been with me for a long time. I wrote a lot of Mothwork in my first year when I was sort of adjusting. These books have just been with me for a long time, 
as I develop as a young adult and now I'm in my early 20s and I'm happy that I'm still writing them but I'm excited to kind of let go of the series. I've never cared for a project I think as much as I've cared for this one. I think I'm on the trajectory to finish it. At this point I'm just being stubborn about it. I'm like I gotta finish this book. So that kind of leads me into the future plans for this project. It really is just to complete the project and kind of a larger goal that I want to achieve is to print it out. So I've printed a lot of my books before, like gotten them bound. Feeding Habits is my 12th novel and every single one of the others that I've written are not going to be published. I don't want them to be published. A nice thing to do at the end is like to print out the book and like see it in my hand and it just feels like kind of the end. And that's my goal is to, you know, line edit moth work again. I've edited that book so many times. Time. but I want to line edit it one more time then I want to kind of line edit feeding habits and I want to print them out and create like a really gorgeous set for myself because I worked so hard <laughs> on these books like they have been really difficult for me to write but feeding habits in particular has been so hard and I just want to feel like kind of like oh I did that but that's feeding habits let's dive into the next project so the next project I've been working on is a novel called seventh virtue this is also a personal project this is an alternate reality spin-off of the Fosterhood series which I mentioned so I describe it as a fantasy version of Feeding Habits. So it's the same characters but a different world, kind of different situations, different backstories sometimes. It's supposed to be my fun book, it's not supposed to be like a book that's a pain like Feeding Habits. It's supposed to be something where I can kind of like escape and have fun while I'm writing it. The genre is adult contemporary fantasy. It's the first time I've ever written fantasy. I've never been a huge fantasy writer or fantasy reader. I've probably read just a couple of fantasy books so it has been quite quite fun to kind of endeavor into a brand new genre. The book is told in third person present tense it's supposed to be limited to one character who's Harrison, who's also one of the narrators of Feeding Habits, but I have kind of added in another point of view, Reeve's point of view. Now, Reeve was the narrator of the original Fostered series, which was a six book series. She's also one of Harrison's best friends, so I've sort of put her in the book, so she has a couple of scenes in Seventh Virtue. The status of this book is that I'm currently drafting it. I started it in May 2021. I thought I'd be able to finish it by now, but I just don't have time because I'm a writing major to write my books during the year. So this book is also set in the US. It's set mostly in New York State. The current word count is about 61,000 words. And here's the summary if you're interested. After being tormented by nightmares of his ex-boyfriend Lonan, Harrison seeks a magical intervention from old friend Reeve. When she reveals she and Lonan are members of the Seventh Roost, one of seven magical families that coincide with the seven virtues and seven capital sins, she also unveils another secret. Lonan is part virtue, the immortal bird that represents each house, and her family's holding him captive in hopes of extrapolating his power. Harrison must choose to continue life as he knows it or rekindle relationships he thought he'd left behind to save someone he once loved. So Drafting Seventh Virtue has been going relatively well. It hasn't been a very difficult book to write because I'm just trying to treat it like I did writing when I was like 13. But currently I'm in a bit of a slow period because I forced myself to stop writing it because I knew I needed to finish Feeding Habits and Seventh Virtue has a thing where it can kind of take me down a rabbit hole for a couple of weeks and that's the only thing I'm thinking about. And I knew that if I didn't finish Feeding Habits like right now at the beginning of the summer that I would never finish it. I have been struggling a little bit with one of the subplots which is the Peterson House subplots. There's like a whole other family. One of the roosts, I think it's hit the fourth roost. That's the Peterson family which is kind of a mutual friend, Reeves' ex of the squad and I have been there in that setting I think for a year and like I haven't really made much progress on it. When I finish Feeding Habits my goal is to kind of like push through this subplot and like hopefully finish it by the end of the summer. It is quite a large portion of the book anyway so it's gonna take a bit of time. I really have been enjoying writing Seventh Virtue. I used to write a lot of genre fiction. The majority of the original Fostered series was genre fiction. At the time I was writing in 2014 so you you know, 2014 was all about YA dystopian. It was hugely steeped in YA dystopian for a number of years, then kind of drifted into just kind of like a weird contemporary genre and then drifted into literary fiction for a little bit. And now I'm back into the full-blown genre, which I, I think is where Fostered thrives, to be honest. Like it gives the characters like more room to, to develop and to get to know one another on a different level. Like literary fiction, they just don't talk to each other. So I found that writing 
writing genre again has been really fun because I've been able to piece together this giant lore of years of Fostered. I've been writing this series I think for like almost eight years and because I've been writing it for so long I've been able to take a whole bunch of information from books I wanted to write but never did or scenes I wanted to write but never did. I've gotten to rewrite a couple of scenes that I really liked but you know now I'm 20 and so I have more knowledge on how to write them kind of more epically than I did when I was 13 or 14 for example. So it's just been a blast to draft this and in terms of my future plans really I just want to finish the book. I kind of had a goal to hit 100,000 words. I don't think that's going to finish the book at all. I think it's going to be a really long book but I had that goal to hit 100k by like the end of August. I don't know if that's really realistic. It probably will be more around 80k. It depends on when I finish Feeding Habits. Honestly I thought that maybe I could finish Seventh Virtue this summer but I think that's asking too much to finish two books in just four months. But it would be great to get more progress done and really finish that Peterson subplot before I go back to school because when I go back to school I'm not gonna work on it. Another future plan is probably to write a sequel because you know I, I can't write standalones when it comes to the Foster series. They all have to be just epics of books. It can't just be one. It has to be seven. So the next project I want to talk about is my short story collection called She Is Also Dead. So finally we get to a project that I want to publish and that I actually have been publishing. So the genre is adult literary fiction and of course short fiction. So the status is that I'm still currently drafting it. I'm almost done the draft. It's currently at 17 stories and I'm thinking it probably only needs 20 stories. A lot of the stories are quite short. So in terms of the setting, so the stories take place in various places in Canada. Sometimes the location isn't specified but sort of in my heart I know that everything sort of takes place in Canada, a lot in Ontario, a lot in British Columbia. So the current word count is about 34,000 words and I'm looking to hit maybe 40,000 or 50,000 words. It kind of depends. So this is the summary of She Is Also Dead. In She Is Also Dead, characters are pushed to act on their gravest impulses, anxieties, and desires. And the species is dead. A small town turns murderous when their local invasive species, the Janices, begin dying. The child narrator of Primary Organ struggles to understand her mother's suicide, while a woman avoiding her sister's boyfriend renovates her childhood home after getting an abortion in phantom state. A mother and daughter's fraught relationship is tested when they move to a Victoria boarding house in Slaughter the Animal, while the middle-aged woman craving touch at the center of the window of a stranger's house finds inspiration in the couple that lives across her apartment. These stories follow women and girls who navigate death, taboo impulses, mother slash daughterhood, and loss, both self-imposed and otherwise, and spare narratives that expose the deep flaws that make us distinctly human. So this project is almost done, which is crazy because I started writing it during my undergrad. I, I think if you're a writing major and you do a lot of short fiction, you're gonna leave your degree with like a short story collection. And last year in particular, I did a short story a month challenge and I ended up leaving that challenge with 16 short stories. Now, not all of them ended up going into this collection because a couple of them are flash. Since I wrote so many stories, I basically wrote a short story collection in a year. That means I probably need to start a new collection because, you know, I don't think I can fit that many more stories in She's is also dead. The themes in this one have changed quite a bit. I mean there's kind of a lot of range in the kind of fiction because when I first started writing short fiction I'd write a lot more like quirky or like concept driven fiction. A lot of you know, like teenage girl narratives, they're kind of feral and that was the kind of fiction I really liked writing at the time. But you know as I've gotten older, as I've sort of developed as a writer, I've started to really love domestic like character driven fiction. All my fiction is character driven but in particular it's less high concept concept and more just about like deep character psychology. So I do think that's going to make it interesting to order the collection because there are kind of two distinct stories that work together in this collection. So this is a list of the stories as well as sort of their status, like if they're published or if I'm submitting them or if they need revisions, a lot of this collection is published. So in no particular order, this is not the order, I've not figured out the order, I have no idea what to do with the order. Slaughter the Animal, which is forthcoming in the new quarterly, I think it's coming out really soon. I'll post about it on my community tab. Joanne I'll Pray For You, which I'm submitting. Primary Organs, which was published in the Malahat Review. It was also nominated for a National Magazine Award in Fiction. The Wolf Antelope Will Not Come For Us, which was published in Filling Station and nominated for an Alberta Magazine Publishers Association Award. How to Spell Alpaca, which needs edits. Blink Twice for Final Judgment, which needs edits. The Species is Dead, which was published in Manola Review and was the first story in this collection to be published. Shark Swimming, which is not currently being submitted, but I should submit it because I really like it. <laughs> The Party, which is forthcoming in the Malahat Review, Fig, which was published in Fractured Lit, Protect the Young, which needs edits, 
what leaves her, which I'm not submitting, but should, I just haven't had time to submit it, Where to Run When the Lamb Roars, which was published in the Thames Review and shortlisted for the Malahat Review's Far Horizons Award for Short Fiction, Phantom State, which I'm submitting, The Window of a Stranger's House, which I'm submitting and was longlisted for the 2022 CBC Short Story Prize, Eat Well, which is forthcoming in Carousel, Listen to the Ocean, which I'm currently submitting, and Jasmine's Brows and Cuts, which was published in The Puritan. So a lot of the collection is published. It's nine stories. That kind of leads me to my future plans. So I'm looking to publish the entire collection. One day it'd just be nice to have all the stories in one place. In Canada, it's quite common to publish short story collections through small presses. So I was thinking I might do that. In general, I want this collection published, but so much of it is already kind of out there, which makes me realize that I kind of need to like stop submitting some of the stories because I, I don't really want to publish the entire collection before like the whole thing is published. You know, I don't want to publish all those individual stories. With that said, I'm still submitting, of course, the fiction in literary magazines, but I think I will keep at least a couple um, definitely unpublished. So the next project that I want to talk about is The Sun Only Drowns Us, which is another novel. This is also one that I think I am going to publish, which is kind of fun. So this is an adult literary fiction novel. The point of view is first person retrospective. It's set somewhere in British Columbia, Canada. I don't know where, like some made up place. In terms of the status, I'm currently drafting it. The current word count is at about 6,300 words and that's the first chapter. So here's the summary of The Sun Only Drowns Us. The summer the sun turns poisonous, 15-year-old Eva commits to living off the grid with her neighbor Lillian Radaccia and Lillian's children, Charlie, Vera, and Jack. Lillian is convinced the sun is an evil force that drives people to their ultimate deaths, so to protect herself and her family, she swaps her bustling life in a small British Columbia town for a secluded life on a desolate island. They settle at a remote cabin where they only live at night, which Eva is thrilled about at first, having come from an emotionally absent household, though she quickly realizes something is not right when Lillian's only daughter, Vera, turns up dead shortly after her 16th birthday. Coupled with Lillian's increasingly peculiar relationship with her eldest son, Charlie, Eva's new life as an honorary Radaccia child begins having more consequences than benefits. That's a bit of a rough summary, of course. I haven't written a lot of the books, so I don't really know what's going to change. But I started drafting this book in April 2020, got so afraid of having to write like a real book that I quit and wrote Feeding Habits instead. <laughs> I had gotten about 4,000 words into the draft before I got afraid and quit, but a couple of months ago I decided to rewrite the first chapter completely for my fiction workshop and I'm so happy I did because the workshop really helped a lot. I loved that workshop. It really helped me understand like that I needed to take a different angle when looking at the book, but I'm really excited to write it. I've never been so excited to write a book before and this one just really really thrills me. I'm not really afraid of it anymore because I've done a lot of development as a writer since I tried to first write it when I was 18. You know in the two years since I think I've done a lot of work in terms of understanding who I am as a writer and feeling like I'm a bit more in control of my writing, my writing style. In general I want the book to end up quite short, about 40,000 words, so I have made a good dent in it though the first chapter will inevitably kind of change just with my ideas for a revision. I hope to write it when I graduate, so next year in 2023. There's gonna be like a gap of time like between like when I graduate like a couple of months where I'm thinking I can take that time off kind of as a writing retreat and I was thinking of maybe writing this book during that time but it really depends on if I finish feeding habits <laughs> because if I don't finish feeding habits that's just another thing that like I don't want to have so many books kind of in the midst. I want to finish one before I'm writing five books at the same time. I love the weird characters in this book. You know, they're kind of like off human. Charlie, who is one of like the main characters in this book is such a little shit. Like he's a terrible person, but like one of my favorite characters I've ever created. Such a bizarre like psychology that I just find really interesting to dig into. So the future plans, I'd love to continue drafting this, but like I said, I just gotta finish my other books first. I don't really know what I want out of my writing career, like whether or not I want to write literary fiction out of my writing career, or if I want to kind of shift or pivot a little bit into genre. And obviously that doesn't really matter right now, but it has gotten me thinking about whether or not I want this to kind of be my debut. And it depends on, you know, if I end up liking it. And I don't really like to make huge, big like publishing plans because that doesn't really work for how my brain <laughs> works. I think the new way that I write it, like the new draft is, is gonna be a little 
tamer in terms of the concept than how I had originally brainstormed it just because my writing style and kind of what I write about has also changed a bit. I'm hoping to create a bit of like a slow paced book that feels really contained. And again, I'd love to query it and publish it traditionally if I end up liking it, but you know, not making promises because I don't like to tie myself down to any one project. So the last project I want to talk about in this video is my poetry collection, which is kind of new and it's called From the Mouth. So the genre of course is poetry and this is going to be hopefully a full length collection. The status is it's about like 50% or a little less than 50% done. I don't really have a summary because this was an accidental book. You know, I started studying poetry in university. I was not a poet before I got to school. This is just a collection of all the poetry I've written since that time, since my first year. Really, this is like an I'll finish the book when I get there kind of project because I don't really know like when it'll be done. I'm still developing quite a bit as a poet. I'm a new poet. I haven't been writing poetry for as long as I have fiction. Clearly, like it's only been a couple of years where I've been writing fiction for nearly 10 years. And so I don't have really any set goals to complete it. It's just kind of something that's sitting in the background for me to think about. So general themes in this book are family, self-image, indigeneity. I've also written a lot about immigration and there are quite a few poems about medical trauma as well. Here's a list of the poems. I don't know how many of these are going to include in the actual collection. I'll tell you the ones that I'm definitely including. Pick, which I'm definitely including. The Woman Assessing Me for Autism Spectrum Disorder asks me to describe a book of frogs, which I'm definitely going to include. While I Wait for Her MRI Results, The Wedding Day, which I'll include. Death of a Language, which I'll include. Egg Fried Rice, which I'll include. My Father's Eating Habits, which I'll include. Moving in Four Steps. Run the Hurt, which is a poem written after Selena Bowen's poem of the same name. At night, I rest my limbs in water and search for my mother's father's mother's mother's tongue, which was recently published in Augur magazine. Are you counting sleep or are you making a turducken, which is the turducken poem that has so many different versions of it. I, I don't know if I can include that one. What's the difference between Good and God, which was published in CV2? Psychiatry in downtown Toronto. The television tells my future. Methods of planting tart berry seeds. Finding things to fear when you like spiders, a burial, which was published in the fiddlehead, we sell skin on sale, which was published in Augur magazine. When you leave your country, don't forget. Casket. My wolf lives on the windowsill, which was published in Grain. The night my mother learns to use the bus, which was published in The Fiddlehead. And Homecoming, which I'll probably include. And that last chunk I probably will include. It's just a couple of them that I'm like not sure about. So in terms of the future plans, really I hope to publish it in full. That would be wonderful. But I don't see this as being anything in the future. It probably will take years for me to even get to that point. So those are the projects I'm currently working on. It's a lot. Really the main focus right now is finishing feeding habits. So let me know what you're working on in the comments below. But for now, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in another one. Bye.